we, uh, we had a specific role to play in this case, and we were part of this process, and I'm here to talk about that, and I'll stick for any questions that you have afterwards. To describe to you sort of how we became involved and what we did, uh, I want to highlight uh, two people that uh, I want to thank. And this is beyond the great work that the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office had done. But on that very first horrible Friday, uh, December the 13th, 2013, the guy that came out with me to the scene as quickly as we became aware of this was a chief deputy district attorney of mine named uh, Clinton McKenzie. Clinton um, was the tip of the spear for us in working with law enforcement and helping to draft those 13 separate warrants that covered everything from um, the shooter's mother's house all the way to the flash drive that we recovered to the um, iPad or the um, tablet that was recovered. Uh, Clinton did all those things and has since worked intimately with law enforcement to make sure that we covered all the things that needed to be covered from a legal standpoint. Clinton was also responsible for working with the courts to make sure during the pendency of this investigation that things remain sealed that are no longer sealed as of today, although you'll notice that they are redacted. The other person is uh, Wendy Buter. Uh, Wendy is the director of our Victims' Compensation Unit, and you know there's an aspect of this that I think mercifully never gets known, but I do want to brag a little bit about the great work Wendy has done on behalf of the community. Over the course of this, they have received 590 separate applications from students, family, and faculty, and have managed about $125,000 in victims' compensation funds to help those folks get the therapy and treatment that they need to deal with the aftermath of this horrible day. My thanks goes out to them. I think, I think the community should thank them as well. In terms of what we did after this case began, I, I do want to talk about a couple things that I see as obvious areas of inquiry, and I think the sheriff touched upon them, but I'm happy to expand a little bit on them. One of the things that I've noticed in the media is a focus on how long it took for us to get to today, uh, given that this occurred back in December of 2013. And, and if you listen closely to what the sheriff said, what he told you is this was always going to be about coming to the public with the most best information as quickly as possible, and that process wasn't entirely in the hands of the Sheriff's Office or the District Attorney's Office or any of the other helping agencies. Now, two big pieces of information were stuck with the, the federal government and their agencies, and we have little to no control over the pace that they set. And I think you heard the Sheriff say he had asked that they expedite the evaluation of some critical pieces of evidence, and they made the decisions that they made. But at no time prior to getting back the results of that analysis would it have been appropriate to come forward with anything to the public until we knew as much of the truth as we could from December the 13th. And I think that's where we're at today. I think one of the other things that I've noticed is some uh, concern about whether or not the, the school district itself should have been more transparent or more engaging with the media and the public in the aftermath of this. I tell you that, in my opinion, uh, Scott Murphy has done exactly what he was asked to do by the sheriff and by myself, and that is to make this a close hold event until such time as we were able to complete the investigation and legal analysis of what took place. And so I thank Scott Murphy for not having gone to the press with pieces of information here and there and making sure that teachers didn't opine on what could have, would have happened until we got to today. The gist of our analysis is, and the sheriff revealed this to you, and it's in a letter that I think will be available to you, is that the criminal liability in this particular case died on the floor of the library in the Arapahoe County and the Arapahoe High School on December the 13th. That is not to say that there aren't other questions to ask. That is not to say that as you go through this report and the other ancillary documents, with the clear 2020 vision of Monday morning uh, quarterbacking, that there won't be other things to say, what about this? Why not this? Shouldn't this have happened? Those are all legitimate and fair questions. When someone, especially a child, is taken from us in this horrible way at a place that we just simply trust as parents is going to be a place of safety and innocence, I think the public needs to ask the hard questions of everyone, everyone involved. And that should take place today and moving forward. 
But to the extent that there is a suggestion that there was some criminal liability, I did not see it in this report or any of the other evidence that was presented to us. So ask those questions and, and even them ask them of our office. If not today, you can feel free to reach out to me um, in the days subsequent to this as you formulate uh, other questions. Can I have a moment? I feel like I'm talking to the judge. Your Honor, can I have a moment? Just There's one other thing that I wanted to address to you because I think this will be apparent from the sheriff's statements as well as the report too, and that is there will be a question of what was missed and was there some other criminal liability for any of the mental health professionals or therapists that dealt with um, the shooter in this case. And given the information that we have, and I can't tell you that it's perfect or complete, but the information that we have, I don't see that. And what you will come to know though, is that despite the involvement of people in the mental health field, that the shooter, like so many others, obfuscated his true thoughts and his goals and his intent. And so they, too, were deprived of certain information that might have helped them make other decisions as well. Now, I only tell you that from the standpoint of what I think was potential criminal liability, and I don't see any. Uh, that does not mean there aren't additional questions to ask. My appreciation to the sheriff and to his fantastic investigative staff for keeping us informed and involved in this entire process. If we ever had a question, they answered it quickly. They included us as partners at the end in going through this report and making sure that we had a chance to give uh, input and even some potential edits in terms of uh, how we discussed things. And I really appreciate the, the sheriff asking us to be part of this. This was important. Uh, and I will stick around until the end, until you're out of questions to ask. Thank you.